It feels like for the very first time ever in Apple's history, Apple is finally listening to their customers and giving us customers exactly what we wanted. But could this also be a bad thing? Well, let's take a look at four examples of where they've given us exactly what we asked for, four examples of where they kind of did, but not exactly, and they had some hidden reasons behind it, and then four examples uh, where they still won't do it. Starting off with four cases where Apple actually listened to us. Number one, the new MacBooks. This is probably the best example of Apple giving us exactly what we wanted. In 2015 and 2016, we got that awful butterfly keyboard that constantly broke, it had a poor typing experience with no feedback, and because of that, Everyone is complaining, and Apple even had to face a number of lawsuits. But in 2019, they finally listened when they launched the 16-inch MacBook Pro, and they've been using that scissor switch mechanism keyboard ever since. The 2016 generation of the MacBook Pros had no legacy ports, so in 2021, Apple brought some of those back. The SD card reader, uh, MagSafe, and HDMI. The 2016 generation also had very poor terminal performance, so in 2021, Apple fixed that with Apple Silicon and a better cooling system. And the 2016 generation also had uh, the touch bar, which a lot of people complained about because it froze, it wasn't really utilized in third-party apps. So in 2021, Apple fixed it by, uh, you know, <laughs> removing it. Not even to mention the MacBook Air, which always had very poor performance. In fact, with the latest generation, the fan was not even connected to the heatsink. So they fixed that by launching the M1 MacBook Air, which outperformed even the 16-inch Intel MacBook Pro, uh, from 2019 in a lot of tasks. And that was without a fan at all. Insane. So yeah, when it comes to the MacBooks, Apple has definitely listened to us. The second good example is the 2019 Mac Pro. This is actually when Apple first started listening. The 2013 looked awesome, but it had proprietary GPUs, no actual upgradability, uh, and it didn't even receive any updates from Apple at all since 2013. So in 2019, Apple listened to exactly what customers wanted and released uh, the pre-2013 design once again. With a large case that was fully upgradable, so you could slot in any GPUs, you had expansion slots, you could slot in M.2s, uh, hard drives, so yeah, you had plenty of expansion. They will change it again massively because of Apple Silicon, uh, but when it comes to the 2019 Mac Pro, that was another good example of when Apple fully listened to their customers. And number three, we have Stage Manager for the iPad, which originally was only planned for the M1 models. And yeah, everyone of course complained because of that. Apple stated that it was impossible to bring it to the older A12Z and A12X iPad Pros because of memory bandwidth limitations. And people once again complained because there was no way that you couldn't do true window-based multitasking, like Samsung has been doing that for years on much less powerful chips. So when iPadOS 16 actually launched, they did include it on the A12Z and A12X iPad Pros. So it was obviously doable and they listened and gave customers exactly what they wanted. And number four, the iPhone battery. We've seen so many complaints for years, and we've even had so many memes and even TV ads of uh, auto manufacturers trolling Apple's poor battery life on the iPhones. But Apple has listened, and they've been working on this for years. iPhones have become thicker and thicker since the iPhone 6S. Uh, the iPhone 13, for example, had major battery life improvements thanks to more efficient chips and much larger batteries. Like Even now, every new iPhone is thicker than the last model, so Apple is prioritizing battery life instead of thinness, and everyone seems to love that. But unfortunately, it's not all like this, because in some cases, they only listen to gain positive news coverage, and they did unfortunately have some hidden motives behind. So let's take a look at four examples where Apple only kind of listened. I think the best example is Apple's repair program. We've seen a lot of right to repair advocates such as iFixit, Lewis Rossman, and so many more complaining that Apple is just not being repair friendly. As a lot of Apple products like the AirPods and the Apple Watch literally broke <laughs> when you tried fixing them and opened them. Um, and then when it came to the iPhone and the MacBooks, these were fixable, but just very difficult to repair and also very difficult to get components for. And Apple came with a solution, which was to announce an Apple repair program to the public. Essentially, individual customers were able to buy parts and even tools to fix their own devices. However, there was a big catch behind all of this, which was that they were very expensive. The components were expensive, and especially the tools, some of them costing upwards of $1,000. Not only that, but they were big and difficult to transport, and if you wanted to send them back to Apple, that was also quite difficult to do as well. So essentially what Apple was saying was, here you go, you can actually fix your own products now, but uh, trust us, it's gonna be way more difficult than paying us to do it in the Apple Store. In fact, individual repair shops couldn't even get into this program at all. And after this announcement, the program kind of went dead and quiet. We haven't even heard about it anymore. 
Uh, and the website, um, it's not even an official Apple website. So yeah, it's very weird. It looks as if Apple only did this to appease the media outlets. And number two, we have Apple's external displays. So since the Thunderbolt display got discontinued in 2016, uh, Apple didn't really have a display of their own. So they launched the LG UltraFine in collaboration with LG in 2016 at the end of it. Uh, but yeah, everyone was asking for an Apple-made display because of the aesthetics and the build quality. So in 2019, they listened and finally delivered the Apple Pro Display XDR, uh, which had Apple's build quality and aesthetics. The only catch was that, well, it was very expensive. $5,000, and that was even without a stand, which uh, was $1,000 extra. And people, of course, complained again that Apple didn't have a cheaper option. So in 2022, they gave us just that, the Apple Studio Display, which was only $1,600, significantly cheaper than the Pro Display XDR. The only catch was that it used the LG UltraFine 5K's panel, so a six-year-old panel, but they sold it for $300 more. Now, it did have better cooling, so because of that, they could bump the brightness by 100 nits more. Uh, it also had the Apple design, a better webcam and better speakers than the LG. But in terms of the display quality, we did a video comparing it to the LG UltraFine, and honestly, it wasn't any better. It was pretty much the same, but significantly more expensive. And buying a $1,600 display in 2022 that is 60 hertz, LCD panel, no dimming zones, I think that's just outrageous. Number three, the always-on display. So users have been asking for this for so many years. In fact, Samsung had it since, well, the S7 Edge in 2016. But Apple kept saying no and no, even though all major Android manufacturers already had an always-on display. Apple finally included one in 2022 on the iPhone 14 Pros, but a catch uh, was that it wasn't customizable at all, not even the brightness. Now, with iOS 16.2, they will be introducing the ability for you to disable the wallpaper, which is great, but you still have no brightness controls and you do not have any other customizability options like you have on Samsung phones. And for iPhone's USB Type-C port. So since 2015, when we got a 12-inch MacBook, Apple has started transitioning all of their other products to USB Type-C. That's all of them aside from the iPhone. People have been asking Apple to switch the iPhone to USB Type-C so, so, so much. Uh, all Android manufacturers have switched. Apple was the only one who didn't. So of course, that was because of their MFI program, which generated significant revenues for Apple. But everyone was pleased to hear that Apple will be switching in 2023. However, the catch is, of course, that uh, they're only doing so because they were legally forced by the new European Union laws. Now, let's take a look at four examples of where Apple is just not listening at all. And the first one is, of course, iMessage. This is definitely the biggest one. Like, people have been requesting this for so many years. And it's actually a known fact, judging from the internal documents that we've seen leaked, uh, that Apple has no plans of doing this because it would simply give users an incentive not to get an iPhone. At number two, we have 60 hertz on the non-pro models. Like, people have been requesting 120 hertz or at least 90 hertz on the non-pro iPhones, but uh, we still don't have that. In fact, you can get $300 Android phones with 90 hertz displays, whereas Apple's $800 plus dollar phones still have 60 hertz panels. And the thing is that a high refresh rate panel actually makes a bigger difference in usability uh, than the performance of the chip. Number three, AirPods on Android. So many people have been requesting this, allowing users to buy and use AirPods on Android, which fun fact you can actually do but they do have many issues. For example, the volume will be limited to about 50%. And for some reason, Apple simply won't release an update to fix that. And number four, cheaper products. People have been asking for more affordable Apple products, but instead what Apple did was bumping the prices even more in the UK, for example, with all the recent iPads and in the US uh, with the baseline iPad. And instead they kept old products for those who wanted more affordable Apple products. Tim Cook is definitely a genius when it comes to raising Apple's market value, which fun fact has actually skyrocketed since he took over. But let me know in the comments your thoughts on all of this. I'm Daniel, it's Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.